Hello, welcome to my channel once again. My name is George Lackick and I am the one and only. Today is a very nice day. Actually, the evening is nicer than it's been all day. It's probably about 19 degrees out here. That's uh, perfect weather for, I don't know what it is, I think the 5th of October, something like that. And yeah, I had a day of work, but to, tonight is my chance to possibly get that frame painted. But before I can apply the paint on it, I like to sand it very lightly with a very fine sandpaper. I am choosing 600 grade for that because I can wet it and the water acts kind of like a lubricant so my sandpaper doesn't get clogged up and at the same time it allows me to just do it very lightly and what that does is it ensures that the paint is going to adhere to the primer a lot better. I've made the mistake on previous paint jobs not to do this at all, not to sand it before putting the final coat on there and what I noticed after only a short while was that the paint would peel off when you just hit it very lightly. You know, you lean it against the pole or something and boop, there's a chunk of paint missing. And when that happens, it's so frustrating when you've got a nicely painted bike and it looks good and it only takes uh, really a week or so and you've got all these marks on there. There's a way to prevent that and that's what I'm gonna do right now. I'm gonna show you. I'm applying minimal pressure just to smooth the surface of the primer. There, I think you get the gist of it. So I'm gonna leave it like <laughs> that for, you know, showing you what uh, the wet sanding looks like, because there's gonna be a whole lot more to show after that. So hang in there. All right, look at the fork. It is done. I just have to wipe both items down with uh, the alcohol. I want to say a quick word about the methods of painting bicycle frames because I've heard before that painting the frame the way I do is destroys the bike because they are previously powder coated. Most of them presumably are from the factory and the powder coat, when it's new of course, it, it is very very good, it is very strong, it's probably superior to what I can do here in the backyard with the spray can. However, to me it matters doing something with my own hands and I'm trying to do this as good as I... Jeez, every time I do a video here there's some kind of emergency going on. I live in the city. Anyways, what I was gonna say is like, yes there is a, a way to clean off the frame and have it sent out, uh, send it out for powder coating and get a perfect job just like brand new and it may be superior to what you can do with a spray can and some primer and you know all these steps that I have to do but however I see the value in doing it myself I enjoy the result and you know you can get good at this you can do this in a way that the bike will be just as good as if it's done in the factory 
and that's when you're really getting fun. And I mean, right now what I'm doing is a winter bike. I don't really care if it's like a beauty or anything, but I still do the best I possibly can because that is going to improve my skills for the next build. And that's always what I'm looking ahead to. Now I've seen people online on other YouTube channels who detail the bike with a pinstriping brush and uh, they do the decaling just manually by hand. And of course this inspires me. There's going to be probably next year sometime or whatever. I I'm going to get a shot at this. I'm going to I'm going to take a shot at this. I'm going to make a bike, build a bike that's where hopefully, eventually, everything is hand built. But you know, it doesn't, you don't get there from one day to the next. You, you don't just take that up and do it. Now what you see me doing here, I have done it several times before and each time I do this, the result gets a little bit better. Now if you're in it for a quick fix, you just want to do this for the bike's sake, you know, yeah, go ahead, do do something else perhaps. But if you're passionate about bikes, you might want to give this a try. It's fun. It's very rewarding. Ethyl hydrate. It's harder to open for old guys like me. Why don't you come a little closer? A little bit closer, yeah, see? Ritrato de metilo. I believe that's good. Now I'm gonna place this on a stick. So you can see that stick over there. Yeah, it might seem crazy, but I, I've got a bicycle painting stick over there, see? See this, uh, how I set up my frame? The advantage is that I can paint the whole thing and then the fork also goes on a stick. But to make sure that I get both sides of it, I'll actually take it off of there. See what I got? This uh, Duplicolor engine enamel. Again, shaking game. I have to do this really fast. challenge with painting a bicycle is that the tubes are relatively small and my aim on the first coat is to make sure that I get every spot on it. I try to get a very thin coat on it first and the best way to know when to stop is when it looks shiny. If I spray it anymore after that point I risk getting runs and they're hard to deal with later. All right, 
Let me show you this close up before my battery dies here. See there are still spots that I have to recoat. You can see that it's not completely covered yet in the front there and probably from underneath but if I cover this too thick right away then I run the risk of getting runs and that's the last thing I want. So as you can see that uh, the coverage is pretty nice and even and this is going to be a great looking bike. So before I continue on this frame I'm going to leave this alone for a few minutes. I'm going to work on the fork. Yeah. Painting the fork gives the frame enough time to dry sufficiently to apply another coat. Can you see the <laughs> I'm on this chair here. Can you see the frame behind me? That's what it looks like right now. I am happy with it. It is orange. It is nice. Uh, well, why did I pick orange? Well, number one is I have some blue stickers that say Norco. And I might as well use them for my winter bike. Orange is also a color that Chevrolet was using for their engines back in the 1970s, I believe, and the paint is still available as engine enamel. It's bright orange. That's what it is. It's uh, Chevrolet orange engine enamel paint. I am assuming that it's going to get hard fast enough so that I can put the bike together by the weekend. The weather forecast for the entire next week is nice. So I'm gonna have a chance to assemble this bike in, in decent weather. And that's really all I, I want to ask for at this point. At the beginning, almost going toward the middle of October. <laughs> in Edmonton, Alberta, you know, you cannot count on the weather. It could change like this. Right now we're good. Just in case you were wondering what this looks like now. Looks nice and shiny, smells like paint. Good coverage, bright orange. Does it get any better than this? This time we did not forget the fork. The fork looks equally good. So I can leave this alone now until it gets dark. Leave it alone to dry. So if you want to see how this turns out, you know what to do. There's a subscribe button on my page on this video at the bottom corner. You click on that and also make sure that you watch some of my other stuff because number one, you might find it really valuable. It might help you do some projects on your own. And number two, it'll help my channel grow so I can do a lot more of this stuff. Thanks. <laughs>